the Master of Hong Kong. We do have collaborative research projects. One of them is a very hot new topic called fetal neurology. And we recently developed a new test called Canet test which can detect for the first time in a long history of modern obstetrics, can detect antenatal cerebral palsy, the most frequent chronic motoric disability in childhood. So I have a group of people working with me at the 10 university centers. I hope to have one day some talented and creative colleagues from Pakistan to join us in this truly international collaborative research, trying to answer the question, is fetal neurological assessment possible? What I'm going to do within half an hour, I will summarize present knowledge of etiology of fetal cerebral palsy. I will tell you about current aspect of 3D ultrasound in evaluation of fetal neuro behavior. I will interpret uh, new modalities uh, trying to assess function of fetal brain. I will speak about CANET. This is our new scoring system. And I will illustrate, I'm sure to most of you for the first time, first cases of antenatally detected cerebral palsy, which is very attractive and uh, already painted as very important first illustrative case of this. I cannot uh, go without uh, saying thank you to my, um, I would say, most effective co-worker, Professor Ruri Hohmeyer, who is in the first row here, and uh, his director of Donald School in Dubai, very talented colleague who enhanced the level of our test, putting a number of new ideas, uh, studying even mentality of animal baby. Thank you, Ruri, and part of this your very family. Aloka, you see how good father you have, this daughter. Good. What is cerebral palsy? Two to three per thousand life births, most prevalent childhood motor disability, lifetime cost of more than a million dollars per person, but much higher if we calculate high incidence of cerebral palsy. Leading cause of cerebral palsy is preterm birth and low birth weight. Unfortunately, whatever we do in preventing preterm labor, we did not succeed. So, hundreds of billions of dollars are invested in research all over the world. You know what is the consequence? The consequence is that the incidence of preterm labor increased. So, the big question, ladies and gentlemen, is what wrong we are doing? Obviously, with the presently available level of knowledge, we cannot prevent preterm labor. First, this is syndromic in character, and second, we have to move, I do believe, to the level of molecule of atom to discover by molecular genetics because we have two genomes in present preterm labor, maternal and fetal. Maybe this will help us to answer. Before that happens, we are really in trouble. Multiple gestation is another leading factor for developing cerebral palsy. This is our spiritual father, Scottish professor Ian Donald. So this picture is, doesn't tell you that we are from 1D to 4D. Now this is Ian Donald to 4D. What happened in a period since my father, Ian Donald, I was the first foreigner coming to stay one year and a half. Ian Donald became a very good friend. He gave me all the rights to use his name, his publication, books, and so on. What happened in the meantime? Ian Donald was a genius man. And uh, he, however, did not predict development of 3D sonography. Unbelievable. Why? Because 3D and 4D sonography are not consequences of the advancement of ultrasonic technology. There is, you of course, no consequence of computer technology. At his time, it was not so well developed. So I will tell you now and illustrate how development was so big so fast. To start this multinational and multicentric research, 
I used my time sabbatical. You, of course, know what the sabbatical year from your busy university and then the other international teaching activities. Suddenly, you have one year from your dean, and now the dean. So, uh, to study what you like, what you couldn't study under routine conditions and pressure. So, I decided with my colleagues, Professor Azumendi and Professor Carrera in Barcelona, where I went for one year sabbatical, multiple pregnancies. First, we studied dichorionic diamniotic twins, two types of movement. One is spontaneous, endogenous. Another one is stimulating. So while one baby is quiet, another one is moving and through membrane it does influence his brother or sister, dichorionic. However, in the cases of monochorionic, we do start to study intrauterine psychology, intrauterine physiology, or intrauterine sociology. And this is famous kissing twins published on front page my book published in London and also in American Journal of Company. So I had suddenly, after many exams, students, patients, lectures, going to Pakistan, other countries, I had one year without anything. You can imagine. Who do you think whom I was missing most in my work there? Secretary. So after two weeks, I said, to my host, I need my secretary. So they brought my secretary, Yadranka, she's now in Doha, and we started to develop all of this. Once more to remind you, three to four per thousand live-born babies. Ladies and gentlemen, this incident didn't change since 1951. You and me are living in an era of dramatic developments in medical medicine, ultrasound. So many things changed, but nothing changed in incidents since 1951. We have learned another important lesson. It was totally unknown. What is the theology of cerebral palsy? Is cerebral palsy a public problem, public health problem? About 800,000 children and adults in America manifest chronic symptoms, and about 8,000 babies and infants are diagnosed with the condition in children. You have seen, remember my first slide, saying how much does it cost. So no doubt at all that cerebral palsy is important public health problem all over the world. As you know, if you go tonight for night duty in the delivery room, I'm sure every one of you will have, a, you know, fear about possible neurological disability in labor and neonatal period. Rightly so. We have, however, learned, contrary to general opinion, that the brain damage happened during labor process, interpartally. No, just 10% happened during delivery, 80% antenatally. So once more, 80 antenatally, 10 interpartally makes 90% of the causes of cerebral palsy happen in pregnancy, antenatally. And this didn't change since 1951. Now the question is, who should detect them? You and me. When? Tomorrow. It's already too late. Is there realistic potential to detect it? There is one problem. Whatever we diagnose is abnormal without test antenatally early neonatal examination, almost in all cases, was perfectly normal. Even at this early stage of my lecture, let me tell you, fetal neurology is completely different than neonatal neurology. Brain, brain, fetal brain is the most changeable fetal organ. And brain plasticity, possibility to change, is increased. In utero, we have tyranny of gravity. Baby is floating, baby is in amniotic fluid surrounding. When the baby is born, quite different neurological requirements. So, neonatologists have to wait six months and 24 months for final diagnosis. This is international criteria. You can't say this baby has cerebral palsy before two years. Very important to know. It is syndromic in character. This girl had perfectly normal pregnancy. This is very 
important message for all the past practices of nutrition. Per delivery, 3,400 grams. After 10, was released from the intensive neonatal unit after four days as a healthy newborn. After 18 months, mother noticed that the baby doesn't learn and cannot sit down independently, cannot move. Mother, not doctor, brought the baby to doctor and diagnosis was made. Everything was normal to even see what might be etiology. Known risk factor is multiples. And if you look at this lovely picture, you can see that some parts of cerebral palsy are not accompanied with mental retardation. So these two boys at the graduation ceremony, you know, after qualifying at the university, you see they do not move, but their intelligence is not affected. They are mentally healthy. So we have to help them. However, if you look at these figures, you will see very high incidence of cerebral palsy in multiples. And of course, leading causes are prematurity and low birth weight. However, if we correct for birth weight about 2,500 grams and compare singletons with multiples, we still do have three to four times higher incidence. So, multiple are this part of cerebral palsy when we correct for low birth weight and test weight. So what then is the cause? The more babies in utero, the higher incidence. Three days ago, there was a World Congress of Twins in Florence, in Italy. And uh, Uri and me had two papers there, test papers on neurobehavior, analyzing individual activities, having in mind that the relative frequency of cerebral palsy in multiples increased with the number of babies in, in utero. And uh, this is a very interesting case, my personal case. A long time ago, we detected very early in IVF patients, four babies. We followed up development to follow them. 35 weeks, we did cesarean section. Four healthy newborns have been delivered. After 18 months, mother brought us babies and we have seen three beautiful, normal, healthy daughters, while the fourth one had cerebral parts. So don't celebrate too early, because you have to wait two years to see what are the, the problems there. We know that this cordon growth to twins, but these are two different entities, genome is different, but are the problem for cerebral parts. However, most significant problem is vanishing means or vanishing tablets. In about 40% of multiple conceptions, there is vanishing phenomenon, 40, quite high. But we have learned another important lesson. Reminding twin or triplet is high risk for developing cerebral parts. It is now our practice to apply our test, kind of test, in follow-up development to the pregnancy of this baby, which is highly for neurological problem. Ladies and gentlemen, with this slide, Chinese are right, they said that one picture tells you more than a thousand words. This picture tells you a lot. We call this kissing twins, a very famous picture, monochorionic, monoamniotic. Look at the mount of this baby. And uh, we are now studying several parameters. One of them is mount contact. It is so, possibility to study simultaneously both structural and functional development is a new hope on the horizon. We also know that perinatal inflammatory disease and in particular fetal inflammatory response syndrome are important because cytokines are neurotoxins. 